Hi to everyone and welcome to this Marion Incorporated and Tessa Tape webinar entitled Die Cut Surface Protection Solutions. Are your product's critical surfaces protected throughout your supply chain? Okay, right now I'd like to introduce today's presenters. First, we have Jim Taylor. Jim is the regional sales manager at Marion. He's been with Marion for over 18 years. His background with this large global precision converter includes a field sales territory, a five-year stint as strategic accounts manager in Silicon Valley, and his present assignment, managing a field sales team covering eight states and all markets in which Marion is engaged, including automotive, medical, electronics, and general industrial. Jim and his team adhere to and thrive under the successful Marion model of early and constant customer engineering support and customer sourcing for demands of value for money. Now also with us today is Beth Schwanekamp. Beth is a senior product manager at Tessa Tape. She's been a member of Tessa's team for 25 years and has had responsibilities ranging from materials management to market and product management. Now for the past 11 years, her market and customer focus has been on the automotive industry, particularly in the OEM, supplier, and wire harnessing sectors. Beth is currently a senior product manager and is responsible for the development and management of automotive single-sided tapes as well as double side tapes designed for bonding and lamination applications. And joining us for our question and answer section today is Derek Twork. Derek is an application solutions engineer at Tessa Tape. He's been a member of Tessa's team for seven years and has responsibilities in research and development and product management. Now for the past two years, his market and customer focus has been on building supply and GIM markets as a senior application solution engineer. In his role, Derek is responsible for working with customers on an engineering level to improve applications by identifying optimal products and processes. So Jim, Beth, and Derek, welcome to today's event. And with that, I'm going to pass things along to Jim to get us started. So Jim, go right ahead. Thanks for the introduction, Rich. On behalf of the TESSA team and my colleagues here at Marion, I'd like to thank everyone online today. We appreciate your interest and think you'll find some useful information in our presentation. Also want to thank IEEE Global Spec for providing this platform and for their technical support. Let's get started. Here's today's agenda. We'll start, of course, with the purpose of this webinar. Beth and I will then talk about our respective companies for a few minutes. The Marion Tessa relationship goes back over 20 years, and our companies perform very different but complementary functions. Beth will then give an in-depth look at Tessa's surface protection products and I'll follow up to discuss advantages of die cut surface protection along with an actual application and some examples. After a brief wrap up, I'll talk about our prototype and sample offer and then we'll take questions. You're probably here with us today because you've got something to protect. At some point in the process, transportation, or use of your product, there's risk of damage or contamination. A common phrase in industry is that perception's reality. Customers who receive scratched or poorly finished goods perceive that they are not getting quality products. The purpose today is to explain how Tessa and Marion can offer the protection you need in a format that's easy to apply. And now I'm going to hand it over to Beth to talk about Tessa. Thanks a lot, Jim. Tessa is one of the world's leading producers of self-adhesive solutions and has a global presence that spans more than 100 countries. We focus on key markets such as automotive, industrial trade, appliance, and consumer electronics, to name a few. And due to our structure for research and development, production sites, and affiliate locations, we can support customers on a local basis, including working together with Marion as a converting partner. Let's learn more now about Marion from Jim. Thanks, Beth. Like Tessa, Marion's a global company. Uh, we're more than a distributor. Marion's a precision converter of pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes and films. We're adding value worldwide by die-cutting flexible materials like Tessa's into custom configurations and constructions designed by our customers. In this slide, we're showing our global footprint as well as the longevity and the markets we're serving. Marion Field Sales Engineers travel beyond these manufacturing locations to work directly with the design engineer and the sourcing team members of our customers. In the next slide, I'll show the converter and the tape manufacturer relationship. Marion's focus and strength is in the die-cutting conversion of pressure-sensitive adhesive roll goods into easily applied formats. 
Using high-speed precision machinery and process engineering expertise, Marion is able to cut complex shapes, laminate in supporting liners and tabs, and add value through enhancement of the roll format. The finished parts, which are constructed of high-performing films and adhesives, are ready for application by the end user. The next slide outlines a few of the questions and considerations that begin Marion's and Tessa's work with our customers. Marion and Tessa strive to engage as early as possible with our customers in the problem solving and material specification stages. We'll need to know some vital aspects of your application in order to select the best materials and the best converting methods available. This slide highlights four key areas we focus on. One, knowing the specific surface material to be protected, what it's being protected from, whether the application is for an interior or exterior environment, and how long the surface protection is expected to remain in place. These are all important to know. We'll also work with you to find the best application and removal methods, ways to reduce waste and increase yield and improve application speed. In the next slide, Beth from Tessa will give a material overview for both their exterior and interior product lines. Thanks again, Jim. Jim just mentioned four key factors that must be determined in order to choose the correct surface protection product. I'd like to take the next minutes to tell you about some of Tessa's key products that are commonly used in the market. These products are all PSAs, pressure sensitive adhesive products. So applied pressure is necessary for a good adhesive bond to the prepared surface. Having all been developed with a specific application or surface in mind, all of the products I'll discuss today are considered for temporary use, which means they will temporarily stay on the part being protected and not for the lifetime of a part. Let's go ahead and get started with the products. If you have any questions about the information that's shared by either me or Jim, there will be time after the presentation to ask. What you're seeing on the slide right now is a short overview about three products I'll discuss for exterior surface protection. A key requirement for any product that will be subjected to exterior environments is its outdoor resistance. Therefore, these products have been put through extensive testing to ensure their performance, reliability, and compatibility. They are all engineered for different surfaces, so let's go a little deeper into each product. Tessa 50530 PV3 is also known as Bodyguard, and it's one of the original exterior surface protection products in Tessa's assortment. It was specifically engineered and developed for the protection of freshly painted vehicles, so its target application area is painted metal surfaces. Its backing is a polyolefin blend of polyethylene and polypropylene, and the EVA adhesive is compatible to paints and clear coats, especially 2K paint systems. The workability during the application is also quite good because the low tack means easy repositioning, and even if the film touches itself adhesive to adhesive, it can be separated and applied. Bodyguard is certified for 12 months of outdoor resistance, so after protecting the painted surface from things like bird droppings, acid rain, and other environmental effects, as well as small gravel pieces, the film will remove residue free and leave behind no paint deformations or ghosting. Due to its polyolefin film and solvent free product design, Bodyguard is environmentally friendly and recyclable too. Bodyguard can be die cut into shapes or dimensions specific to an application or perforated on the roll for an additional dispensing option. Another exterior surface protection film I'd like to inform you about is Tessa Bumper Film. The reason behind the bumper fill name is due to its performance on painted plastics. Therefore, whereas we just discussed Tessa Bodyguard being the appropriate solution for painted metal, now we will concentrate on a product for painted plastic. An example application is shown in the illustration on the slide, masking a pillar applique during transportation. The film backing for Tessa 50560 PV1 bumper film is also a polyolefin blend of polyethylene and polypropylene. Its adhesive, however, is synthetic rubber. It possesses similar characteristics as Tessa Bodyguard in that it can protect a surface for up to 12 months in outdoor exposure, and once demasked, there are no deformation ghosting on the surface. It also provides a very secure adhesive if exposed to the elements during transportation, 
and can be disposed in an environmentally friendly way. In some instances, TESA bumper film can be used to protect unpainted plastic too, but pre-testing should be made in order to confirm the compatibility. Bumper film can also be converted into customer-specific die-cut shapes or perforation lens. As a side note, TESA also offers a slightly different product variation called 50560PV2, which was developed for the protection of PMMA and SAN surfaces. If you're interested in that product option, more information can be made available after the webinar. Lastly, I'll share information with you about TESA GlassGuard product 50550. GlassGuard was specifically developed for the protection of automotive glass windshields, particularly in markets where damage to the windshield occurs from small road debris that kick up or environmental effects like acid rain or bird droppings, GlassGuard is a good protectant. The combination of its backing and EVA adhesive offers a nine months outdoor exposure resistance and when applied properly, GlassGuard is free of optical distortion. It can also be removed easily without leaving adhesive residue behind. Let's move on now to a core assortment of TESA's interior surface protection products. The things to keep in mind when choosing an interior surface protection product are similar to those mentioned before. What is the surface to be protected and will secure adhesive anchorage be achieved? Will the product adhere to all shapes and how is its workability? What are the storage conditions and is the product suitable for them so that expected results are received once the product is removed? I'll be discussing six different products in TESA's assortment for interior protection shapes as shown here on the slide. Some of the products are similar in construction regarding the backing film type or adhesive, so they can interchangeably be considered for an application. However, there are also differences that can make one product more applicable than another. I've already mentioned that outdoor exposure resistance is a key characteristic of the exterior surface protection products. Equally as important for the interior surface protection products is the compatibility of the product to various surfaces. The chart showing now provides an overview of these six products and the blue dots act as the performance indicator. Three dots represent excellent performance and what dot means the product is appropriate and good enough. As is always the case, the compatibility ratings are a guideline. All products should be thoroughly tested on the substrates under the customer specific conditions to ensure that the final performance meets the customer's expectations. Let's now learn more about each product. The first product I'll discuss for interior surface protection is TESA 4848 PV1. It features an environmentally friendly polyethylene backing and an age-resistant acrylic adhesive. Both ensure an easy, residue-free removal within four weeks of applying the product. TESA 4848 PV1 is resistant against different chemicals, physical stress, and moisture. The backing is transparent and therefore avoids a darkroom effect when the film is applied to glass. The transparency also helps identify the surface that has been protected. The product is suitable for application in various industries, including automotive and appliance. Perforating the film is an option for easier dispensing from the roll, which also removes the need for a cutting device. The next product to review is TESA 51132. It's a clear, premium-grade, self-adhesive film that consists of a polyethylene backing coated with a water-based acrylic adhesive. This means that disposal is also environmentally friendly. TESA 51132 has been developed for the protection of various surfaces, especially interior parts of automobiles like carpets, dashboards, and door sills during storage, assembly, and transportation. It exhibits good adhesion properties on rough surfaces of both high and low energy substrates and textiles. TESA 51136 PV2 has a very similar construction to the product we just reviewed in that it's also constructed of a polyethylene film backing and an acrylic adhesive. It was designed for masking large areas and its translucent green color is helpful for visual identification. This product is thicker than TESA 51132 and it has about the same adhesive strength. Its adhesive also shows good performance on low and high energy rough surfaces, 
as well as glossy, low surface energy plastic parts. Also similar to TESA 4848PV1 and 51132, TESA 51136 PV2 can be converted into custom width rolls, die cuts, or width perforations. The illustrations identify how it can be used to protect flat surfaces on appliances. What's unique about TESA 7133 compared to the first interior surface protection products I've discussed is the backing and the adhesive. TESA 7133 is constructed with a blue polypropylene backing and a natural rubber adhesive. The polypropylene backing provides a very good puncture resistant benefit, as well as easy one piece removal during demasking. This is a very good, well rounded product and has a good adhesion performance on many substrates, including painted surfaces, glass, aluminum, low and high energy surfaces, and textiles. The puncture resistance of the film makes it suitable for protecting areas of potential high impact such as door panel protection and the step tread in a vehicle. Compared to the polyethylene backing of TESA 51132 and 51136 PV2, the polypropylene backing will not be as conformable around different shapes and bending geometries. However, it is an excellent product for masking larger flat areas. The next product to review is TESA 4289, which is similar to TESA 7133. It's constructed with a yellow tensilized polypropylene backing and a natural rubber adhesive. Therefore, it possesses similar qualities such as residue-free and easy one-piece removal. As mentioned before, the polypropylene backing is puncture resistant and therefore is also suitable for protecting areas of potential high impact. Its adhesive exhibits good performance on low surface energy, glossy and rough surfaces textiles, and also high surface energy rough surfaces. It's nearly twice as thick as 7133 and offers more than double the adhesion strength. Therefore, it could be a practical solution for LSE surfaces. Lastly, I'd like to introduce to you today another unique product, one that is actually not a PSA. The final product is TESA 4379, and it's a translucent, non-adhesive polypropylene film. In many instances, there was and still is a need to mask off a large area, which can be costly if only considering an adhesive product. Therefore, under the right conditions, TESA 4379 could be a consideration. The polypropylene film is embossed on one side, which helps bond paint overspray to the film, and the translucent color helps for proper positioning. TESA 4379 can be converted and combined with other tapes to create an all-in-one masking solution. Now that I've shared information about some of TESA's products for interior and exterior surface protection, Jim will now go over more details about Marion's converting expertise. Thanks, Beth. In the following slides, I'll provide some specific ways in which Marion's multi-step converting processes can enhance the product features of TESA's product line. The features and benefits summary here highlight the most frequent customer requests and the results they expect. You can rely on your Marion representative to guide you through these options to develop the results you need. The before and after pictures on the next slide depict an actual application that improves several key aspects of a customer's issue. This photo shows our automotive customers' initial method of protecting a surface during their painting process. Strips of tape were torn from a roll and put into place individually until this contoured plastic part was sufficiently masked. This procedure was unacceptably slow and open to variation in results. Marion's approach was to work closely with the customer to understand the requirements, the duration, temperature exposure, plastic composition, etc., as well as the challenges in installation and removal. Our solution was a custom designed set of mask shapes that consistently cover the required areas and use less tape. It was also easily applied with much greater speed. The customer increased their throughput by 50% with our parts, which met their target. We've also received reports of increased employee morale in this department as their frustration of using rolls of tape is diminished. The next slide shows some other types of die cut protective film applications. 
I mentioned earlier that Marion's involved in many industries. Here's some examples of converted protective films used in the automotive, consumer electronics, and medical industries. The next slide details specific features Marion can fabricate from Tessa's protective tapes. Here we're showcasing some options available in converted film parts. Marion and Tessa Field Sales and Engineers want to be involved with the earliest stages of your product design to help you select materials and incorporate features such as these. We're equally interested in customer emergencies where an unplanned for event requires quick action and decisions to protect a surface. Marion and Tessa offer decades of experience in technically advanced manufacturing to our customers throughout the world. Engage our teams at any point during the life of your products to enhance your processes, quality, and improve productivity. We do appreciate your interest and attendance today and want to encourage you to try Tessa products and Marion converting for yourselves. On the next slide, we'll show you how easy that can be. All those of you in attendance today, please take us up on the offer of a free sample or actual prototype. You're welcome to contact us and request a sample and even send a 2D CAD file to us and Marion will create and send you a Tessa surface protection part to your design. You can find the prototype sample request and contact us widgets at the bottom of your dashboard. Thanks again for attending. Sorry we put you off to the very end for questions, but we're ready to offer more details or clarification to any parts of the presentation or any related topics that weren't covered, so fire away. Thanks, Jim. And now let's get to the Q&A. We'll have some time for questions. And now I'll hand things back over to Beth. Beth? Thanks a lot, Kim. Uh, we do see some questions coming in, so thanks everybody for your participation in advance. Please go ahead and keep on uh, typing in some questions for us to answer. So let's get started first. Here's a question for Derek. How does the thickness of the film influence the selection process? Thanks, Beth. Um, uh, the thickness of the film and how it uh, influence of the selection process. I think we first need to look at the level of protection we need. Um, obviously, the thicker the film, um, the, the more protection. But as we are also dealing with a lot of the time low surface energy substrates with an adhesive that's meant to be temporary, uh, it's, it's important that we don't get anything too thick because we still need to have a level of conformity to protect the whole product. So it really is a balancing act and something that um, our lab in Sparta, something we can help uh, with with the sales team and our, our application solutions engineers in finding the right, the right solution. Okay, thanks a lot. So I do see a couple of questions came in on the same topic, referring to 4848 PV1 and the darkroom effect. Um, by darkroom effect, it just means that due to the transparent nature of the, the backing, there's no visual impairment on the glass. So it's really just referring to a non-dimming effect, nothing more technical than that, just with the transparent pro uh, product excuse me, on the glass, there's still the visual transparency um, to see through the glass if necessary. Let's go now to another question. Um, this one will pass over to Jim. What are some typical die cutting limitations such as size, tolerances, geometry? Thanks, Beth. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, Marion can make parts that are several feet long by several feet wide. The question is, is that what's best for the customer? Um, a part that large often isn't very economical. It's slow to produce, it's slow to die cut, and it's very likely going to be slow to install for the customer and, and maybe even difficult to install it um, accurately. What Marion likes to do, we work very closely with our customers and the designers and even get on the assembly line if necessary. We want to find the best you know, geometrical shape and understand uh, the amount of time that the assembly team has to put it in place. So oftentimes, with a larger part, we'll suggest breaking it into pieces. And that way, um, it's more economical for us to make because we can make it more rapidly on our equipment 
but it's also um, often easier for the assembly team to install with less uh, frustration, more accuracy, and um, I think an all-round better, uh, better fit. Our sweet spot for die cuts is really about you know, within the 10 inch by 10 inch range. We make a lot of our high volume parts at that size. Um, with regard to tolerances, that's kind of a, it's a bit of a loaded question because uh, tolerances are based on uh, film size or film thickness, the actual dimensions we're talking about. So Marion put together a nice uh, chart, which I'll make available to everyone. It's a nice tolerance chart uh, that has all those different factors in there and helps the designers kind of, uh, you know, uh, consider that when you're making the, uh, your product design. Um, and as far as uh, you know, geometry goes, limitations there, there are certain tooling limitations. And we're obviously we're talking about die cutting. So there are limitations that our tool makers have as to the distance between blades and to uh, certain uh, uh, geographical or uh, geometrical shapes. So those are uh, questions we can take on a one-on-one -on -one basis when we're working with you directly. Uh, it's just a little hard to generalize in this format. So we can, we can we'll welcome your questions offline uh, about specifics. So hope that answers your question. Thank you very much for that answer. So the next question we'll field is, are there materials available here in the U.S. and what are the master roll sizes? Um, so yes, generally speaking, all of the interior and exterior surface protection products that I presented are available in the U.S. Um, the master roll width range from approximately 1,200 millimeters up to 1,450 millimeters. We do have some exceptions in there, but I would say that's a good general statement. And the length of our master locks um, also varies quite a bit by the product. Some of them are 330 meters long. Some of them can be um, 1,000 meters long. So it's really just dependent on the product. Um, as Jim just mentioned, um, that's information that we can further follow up. Uh, specifically one-on-one -on -one after the, the webinar. Okay, just one second here while I look for the next one. Okay, Jim, how about, here's a question back to you. Can Marion's parts be manufactured for automation? Uh, the short answer is yes, but like uh, I think we're going to find out with a lot of these questions, it's all uh, it's uh, d dependent on a lot of factors. Automation, and what we mean by automation is can the parts be fabricated so that they can be dispensed robotically or uh, through some other automation um, machine? And we are specialists in this kind of converting. Uh, we've we've taken a lot of labor out of uh, out of the customers, uh, many of our customers, uh, for years now through automation. Um, it makes sense to, to use automation when you have high volume, a uh, high volume number of parts and typically smaller parts. I'm going to say the, the sweet spot for an automated part is something less than six inches by four inches. Um, and and that's, um, that enables us to, to cut the parts uh, for some very specific types of automation that we can talk about offline. But we cut um, these types of automated parts to very tight tolerances, not only in the part itself, but in the way that the part is laid out on the liner. Uh, the, the tolerances between the edge of the part and the edge of the liner, and from one part to the next, has to be very consistent for consistent automation. Um, Having said that, protective films lend themselves very well to, uh, to automation. Um, if you have a part, typically the best candidate is a flat part, a higher volume, and by that I mean tens of hundreds of millions of parts a year, and a part that um, is, um, is otherwise difficult to, to put in place with a human being, either because of labor constraints or, uh, or just some other complexity. But uh, yeah, again, the short answer is yes, we'd be happy to to look at any of your parts in an automation uh, scenario. Okay, great. You know what, as a good follow-up maybe to that answer, another question is at what volume does a die cut make sense? Okay. Yeah, what volume, another, another question with lots of variables, but um, Marion's got the ability to die cut parts in many ways. Uh, die cutting with a standard steel rule or rotary die 
is very common for the industry. At lower volumes, we might, uh, we might want to discuss, uh, certainly for prototypes, laser cutting, plotter cutting, um, which is essentially making parts with no tools. This enables the designer to figure out if the parts work or not, and it also enables them to make changes very quickly without that tooling investment. So, you know, back to the original question, um, volume-wise, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw out thousands and, uh, and on up in terms of uh, creating a die for something. If it's a part that's going to be repeatable and you're going to be using it month after month and as part of your uh, regular production uh, process plans, then, then investing in a die is, uh, uh, makes sense. If it's a temporary fix, maybe we can, we can um, uh, fulfill your needs with a, a laser cut or a plotter cut part. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to flip over to another question now. Is there a product that will protect both painted and in-painted plastic? And the same question on metals. So, Derek, maybe you can help out with that one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what we would look at there is uh, all substrates differ so much. Paints aren't paints. Powder coats aren't powder coats. Different coatings on metals. Um, Everything's always different. Uh, so where I would point to that is I think our products would work on um, painted, unpainted, and we, that would be something that we could test in our lab uh, in Sparta, Michigan, that we have the full capability of doing uh, different heat aging or thermal cycling to meet your needs to see, hey, what, what are we going to do in the long term with this substrate? Um, Unfortunately, not a generic answer for painted or unpainted, but um, because they differ so much. But we have the capabilities to do that and give you the answer. So. Okay, thanks, Derek. So the next question is: Other than home appliances and electronics, which industries are die cuts used? I can take that one, Beth. Um, we use a lot of uh, a lot of die cut films in the. Uh, consumer electronics industry uh, to protect the screens. Uh, we see that a lot. Really, whenever you have, uh, aside from that, aside from protecting glass and really uh, uh, vulnerable surfaces, uh, we see it a lot in industries where uh, you're protecting what's known, at least in the automotive industry, as a class A surface, a surface that you need to keep uh, in really good condition until it gets to the consumer or end user. So. Um, you know, it runs the gamut. I, I did mention uh, the medical industry where there's, you know, perhaps um, we're protecting a, uh, a faux finish, a grain surface. Um, we've got uh, applications in uh, uh, general electronics where they're trying to protect a painted surface. So just, just lots of uh, more varied than you would think. Uh, people are just concerned about keeping um, uh, parts protected. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, the next question, do we offer any permanent protective tapes? So I will go ahead and take that one. Um, we do have two different categories of permanent protective tapes, one that is an ultra-high molecular weight PE tape, another that is polyurethane. So they weren't specifically included in today's presentation, but more information can be made available for them after the webinar. Okay, just one second. Okay, Derek, how about, here's one for you. What types of substrates are the most challenging to adhere to and have a greater propensity for residue? Okay, so um, substrates that are hard to adhere to, we're gonna look at uh, surface energy of substrates, so anything that has a low surface energy, painted substrates, powder-coated substrates, uh, some polymers such as polypropylene, polyethylene, all have low surface energies and um, naturally PSAs don't bond well to them. Uh, luckily for surface protection, that's kind of a, a feature we're looking for, so um, something that'll stick in enough but not too much. And then as we move to substrates that we bond well to, that's where we're going to see high surface energy and uh, more probability of um, residues left behind. Uh, you're looking at metals, glass, uh, polyethylenes, polycarbonates, or not polyethylene, sorry, polycarbonates. Um, higher surface energy, the tape's gonna stick better to those and they could leave stuff behind. Again, um, 
I would say our surface protection products are designed not to do that. Uh, so where you would look at an opportunity for that happening is making sure you have the right product that's going to fit the environment, uh, the right uh, temperature ratings, UV stability, stuff like that can all, all lead to residues in the long run um, and finding the right product that meets your needs um, is important. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, Jim, I'm going to flip a question over to you. Okay. How does Marion's team address the surface protection part drawing provided by a customer that deals with concavity, convexity, holes, etc.? Okay, uh, another good question. That one, um, it is difficult. There's no question that when you're dealing with a non-flat surface, you're talking about added complexity. You've got to figure out how to get a film to contour, to cling to, uh, and, and adequately protect a surface that um, may not want to, uh, to be as yielding as it needs to be uh, for that protection. So Marion sales engineers are trained to ask really good questions that drill down to what the customer's expectations are. So we want to, you know, meet in, in, again, as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll meet in person, we'll meet on the assembly line, we'll take a look at the part. We've had customers actually send us parts and said, hey, make a mask for this. And that's, that's not part of our ISO charter, but, but on a limited basis, we can, we can recommend and mock up some, some prototypes that actually mimic what we would do in mass production. And we've done that successfully. Uh, one example is in the, uh, the presentation from earlier. That was the contoured large part uh, that we did. We actually created those masks now, the customer gives the final blessing and actually creates the drawings that we later follow and PPAP to, but uh, Marion can, can um, uh, create some three-dimensional, uh, I would say, uh, parts that can, can conform, and we do that a few ways. One, we use conformable films from TESA, like the polypropylenes, polyethylenes, that can take that, that, that non-flat and kind of stretch and bend and so forth, we can put in perforations, we can put in slits, we can make holes, all these things to accommodate the surface as best as we can. Uh, we can also look at higher tack adhesives so that the adhesive, if, if it proves uh, uh, necessary to bond more, more firmly to that curved or uh, concave, convex surface. So there's a, a few tricks that we have developed over the years to, to make a flat two-dimensional part uh, cling to something that's that's uh, a little more complex. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next question that came in, or another one here on the list, is can you tell us the benefit of 4379 being rough on one side, and why would that be important to a customer? So 4379, which was the non-adhesive polypropylene film, was originally developed um, to be used in applications for paint and overspraying paint in an automotive painting environment uh, for bumper masking as an example. So the one side is rough, it is specially embossed, and that embossed side faces out toward the paint. So therefore, any paint overspray um, grasps onto the embossed side of the film more so than on the, the smooth side, and that helps keep any overspray intact during the painting process. Okay, Derek, I'm gonna flip one over to you. Okay, from what I've seen, the 50530 bodyguard can be used to protect aluminum profiles for window molding, but is it the best alternative? Since this protection should only last up to one month to protect the modules of post-installation works on the construction site. Can you give some feedback regarding that one? Yeah, I think um, it all depends on the customer and really what their their schedule is for putting modules together, how long they'd be outside, how long it takes to get till everything's finished and they remove that. If we have a customer that has a tight window within one month, I think uh, maybe it would be time to look at a different product that maybe doesn't require as much UV stability or temperature stability. Um, but I've also seen uh, customers that are 
doing the same application and they want to be able to put things together that sit outside for uh, a much longer time, four to six months before they remove that. So it really depends on the application and what the customer is looking to do in their timetable to find the right product to meet their need. Um, so yeah, that's where I, th I would think we'd look at more of the application and what it calls for. Okay, thank you. Um, so there was a follow-up question, are these products stocked in the U.S.? Um, I would say yes, for the most part, from Tessa's perspective of the source tape, most all of the products are stocked. So the stocking status is dependent on um, the volumes that are required in the market. Um, but off the top of my head, yes, most of these are stocked, maybe with the exception of the glass guard product that was mentioned, which was 50550. Um, that would need a longer lead time as it's a non-stock product in the U.S. Um, let me look here one second for the next question. Okay, here's another question about the 4379 polypropylene film. What masking tape options does Tessa offer to utilize in conjunction with this 4379 film? So, obviously, as a non-adhesive film, um, it needs something to help it adhere to a surface. So, um, 4379 film is, is um, a product that can be considered when a large area needs to be overmasked. It's rather cost effective. But that being the case, it does need to be adhered to the surface. So depending on what you're doing, if it's a paint line or merely just attaching it in place, that helps determine what type of product is necessary. So as an example, if you need to mask off an area and you need a really fine line of a paint differentiation, perhaps between two colors, you could use one of Tessa's fine line tape products used for de design masking. On the other hand, if the film is just being held into place to cover an area, but you don't need any critical line um, of paint separation, you could use a general purpose masking tape. One of the driving factors would be are you experiencing any high temperatures? So a temperature resistant tape would be called for if you were exceeding more than room temperature and that would also help derive which tape would be used. Okay, Jim, I'm gonna pass one your way. Um, you've talked about it a little bit already, but just can you walk through the process of working with Marion? Sure, I'd be happy to, Beth. Um, I think it'll be no surprise that I recommend that we put you immediately, as soon as possible, into the capable care of our your friendly, knowledgeable sales engineer for Marion. Uh, they will walk you through the entire process, beginning with gaining an understanding of your part, what you need, what you're trying to accomplish. And we're interested in doing that at the very earliest stages of product development, even at the conceptual stage, even with a napkin that you sketch some, thing that, some things out on this, not too soon to get a Marion sales engineer involved. And they'll work with you to kind of home in on what you need. They'll understand the requirements. They'll understand, uh, once they do understand these things, they'll be able to select some materials to show to you, to sample to you, and uh, ease you along as you start to refine your design. And as you refine that design, they can be there to offer uh, uh, some prototypes, to offer some laser cut or even early uh, prototype die cut parts, and then after that's locked in, we can begin to offer uh, the pricing, uh, scheduling, uh, an understanding of the product life cycle, and then once we've got that locked in and the price is agreed upon, and then things begin to, to really uh, ramp up because we're getting our, uh, our quality people involved for potential PPAPs, we're getting our customer service people involved, our sourcing people have already been involved because they're working with the material that you selected and working to get uh, a plan together uh, to support that. Um, and once you know, purchase orders are, are uh, issued and a uh, schedule is defined, um, your sales engineer is there to, to make sure everything is flowing the way this should back at Marion, uh, whichever Marion location they're working from. 
and it, it works that way throughout the entire life cycle, all the way to the end of life. Uh, and we want to be there with you and those hopefully years later when it comes time to design your next generation uh, so they can start working on that and to help manage the flow of materials. So it's really a, it's really a, a lifelong uh, product uh, cycle. And, and uh, certainly um, if you've got a, a part designed, and oftentimes customers do come to us with parts already designed and say, here, quote this. Well, oftentimes we'll still ask questions because we want to know how you're going to use the parts. Uh, you didn't draw a tab on this. Do you think a tab would be easier for you to, to place the part and later remove it? Uh, do you think automation might be in your future? Does it make sense? So um, even though we're given some CAD files or uh, prints uh, of a, a part that's uh, finished, unlike our competitors who may just quote it and, and, and move on, we'll continue to ask questions to make sure that uh, you end up with a product that that uh, works well, is cost effective, and, and uh, is sustainable throughout your entire life cycle. Okay, great. Thanks for that information. Sure. It looks like we can now wrap up the Q&A session. So I'd like to say thanks to Jim and Derek for helping to answer these questions. Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Kim now. So thanks a lot, Kim. All right, great. Thanks, Beth. Um, as she said, we are going to wrap the webinar up right there. Thank you to all of our presenters for spending some time with us today, and thank you to all of our audience members for being a part of this webinar event. Take care, and we'll talk with you soon.